This is Coach. Uh, just uh, going to go through a few things that I think the kids will find helpful and you'll find helpful in dealing with uh, the situation that you're in. Again, because of the fact that their heads are so much larger at that age than the rest of their bodies, you got about 90% of the head size is already developed when they're at that age that you got them. So, again, it's real important, as you have already indicated, to work with the neck area. So. I thought the first thing that would be relevant to them is just learning how to contract various musculature. And by doing the, uh, they've all seen the Hulk movies and so forth, but just uh, relating to that for the tension and learning to, to tense up the muscles of the neck and the associated muscle groups that actually function with the neck so uh, that are so important to supporting the head. First of all, just learning to, again, contract the neck muscles, like in the Hulk pictures, strains real heavy through the neck area. So just having them learn to tense as they move their chin around a little bit, again, they can learn to get these muscles of the neck some part of the, and the rear part of the neck going. Now, if they remember with the Hulk, he usually rolls his arms and in a similar fashion, if you roll your arms like you are getting into a stance for football, um, based in football position or stands for tackling or blocking. Again, if they'll roll and take their traps and their scapula, which is again the shoulder blades, and pin those tight. So the front look is going to be like this. My elbows are in and up. Okay, and now my traps are encasing my neck area. So they've gone from learning to contract the neck muscles. Now they're learning to contract the trap muscles. Okay, by bringing their elbows in, squeeze them to the back. I'm going to turn around here and give you a shot at the back. Squeezing the elbows in and lifting the elbows up. Okay, they again get those traps to activate, and the traps now are encasing them the neck. Uh, if you stay like this and just blow your neck, the traps don't do anything, and that's the basic Hulk position. You can see the trap, but they aren't encasing the neck. When the elbows come back and the elbows go up, now... I've got that ne neck encased, okay? And that's a position you want to uh, slowly get them to learn to contract in. I'll go uh, turn to the back, so you're going to see the elbows come together, and you're going to see them pull up, right? and you can see the traps, and you also, the scapular, the shoulder blades, are also going to be pinned tightly back in this position. So once you've got them where they can learn to do those things, now you've got the major integration of the, of the neck traps and the scapula. And now I can start working on the various musculature in the neck uh, and head region. The first thing you learn to do is just take the chin and bring it to the chest and then take it up to the ceiling. And again, just first of all, contract the neck and then throw by bringing the, the scapulas together and, and raising the shoulders, throw the traps into the movement, okay, and the scapulas. All right, so you have a combination. So chin to the chest, chin up to the ceiling. Chin to the chest, chin up to the ceiling. Again, I don't want to have the head jutted forward too much. I want to have it back in a good post posterior position. And I also want to keep the traps and, or excuse me, the scapulas pull back tight, okay, tight position, I'm constantly trying to keep the shoulders back so that out of my peripheral vision I can't see the shoulders, all right, and then I know my scaps are in a pretty good position, now I'm in a good posture, and once I go to get in football position, I can stay in this posture by just flexing the ankles and knees, and now I'm in good hitting position, or good football position, or good athletic position. So again, the posture is so important to keep your weight over your feet and also to integrate and, and to make sure you're having the various musculature of the neck working and the head neck trap region working together. All right, now once we've learned to go to the chest to the ceiling, I don't want to overextend and go beyond 180 degrees. So I'm not way back here. I'm just going to go chin to chest and then up. Yeah. Okay. Alright, now the next thing I want to do from there 
once I've uh, accomplished that, is I want to take and learn to get these muscles of the back of the head, neck region to activate. And I do that by bringing the chin into the Adam's apple and bringing it up from there. Adam's apple and bringing it up from there. And again, still maintaining posture at all times. And I want to keep or feel these muscles working right here at the base of the skull when I'm doing that. Okay? Now, the next movement that we want to accomplish with them is we're going to take and move the chin now, or excuse me, work on the ears and go side to side. This is uh, where we're going side to side. I'm going to take the ear hole and I'm going to try to place the ear hole into the rear delt here first, bring it back, take the same over to the other side, and then contract as hard as I can, keeping the chin neutral, okay? Then I'm going to go to the medial delt, ear hole to the medial delt, ear hole to the opposite medial delt, okay? And keeping the head neutral. Now I'll bring it to the anterior frontal delt, ear hole to the frontal delt, and ear hole to the frontal delt. And again, when I'm doing this, I want to try to do it slow and contract muscles, and I can uh, feel them, and that, that, I turn my head and neck too much that time. Just keep it neutral to start with. Then the advance is to now take, turn the head to one side, now take the ear hole to the rear delt, medial delt, and anterior delt, and of course do both sides. Alright, the next thing is to turn it to that side, the chin to that side, go rear delt, or medial delt, and go anterior delt. Again, I don't recommend you try all this at once, but it's, this is just a sequence or a learning curve that they can learn to accomplish these skills one at a time. You can take one a day or whatever and get them where they can just, like I said, uh, learn to feel those muscles. They'll then uh, engage them, and they're also going to get some strength development from this, of course. And again, they're too young to be dealing with the added, uh, added resistance at this point. Just the head's going to be plenty heavy for them to do these various activities. All right, now the next thing that I would do, and they should not move them to any area that makes them uncomfortable or doesn't feel good either. I mean, they want to feel the muscles contract, they want to feel some tension, but if it's hurting them, then obviously, again, they back off and, and learn to do it a, a little bit more gradually. You never move completely into pain. You move to a painful area, then come out of it and then you can start to increase your range of motion. All right, uh, rotation is the next thing we want to do, and that's going to be just taking good posture, and as you notice, I, as I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I'm loosening that posture up, so you've got to constantly remind them, keep the scapulas pulled back, bury the shoulders in your back out of your peripheral vision, and again, let your shoulders just kind of maintain a neutral position. You don't want them way up, I want them lay down, just a nice, comfortable, easy position, but the scap is pulled back. On rotation now, I'm going to take the chin, and I'm going to just move the chin to the right, and move it to the left. Chin to the right shoulder, back to the left shoulder. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to try to contract. Now, I can, again, work that chin to the rear delt, rear delt, medial delt, medial delt, anterior delt, anterior delt. So I'm working again a full range of moves, mode, move, <laughs> movement that they will get into as they're doing its various skills because there's no static position once you're playing. So you can get hit in a lot of awkward type positions. So you want to have that musculature developed to have some resistance in any position you put them in and again have some stability to it. So. Uh, once we've, we've gone through the rotation, and then the, uh, the, we want to do the spiral from that point. And again, I'm using the shoulder tip, uh, a posterior delt, I'm going to move the chin from left posterior delt and down, okay, to right anterior delt and up. Medial uh, delt and up the medial delt 
on the opposite side and the opposite ceiling, frontal delt and rear delt on the opposite side. Now, if they're doing this right and contracting well, they're going to feel it all the way down into their uh, hip area through their uh, external obliques, and a lot of this will, a lot of this musculature will work as long as the scapula are pulled back. As soon as you relax them, then all this area of the core starts relaxing too. As soon as I pull these back, though, you'll feel again if the scapulas are pinned. And I always, as you remember, I always was on you know, when we wanted to change something. We always just pounded on it to always over exaggerate. So I don't want to just kind of pull the scapulas back. I want to ram them down. Okay, so that again I can feel all this oblique, and I also put all the weight on the inside of my heel, and I'll feel all my legs and. Uh, Adductor uh, uh, integrated. Okay, the last one that is a little more difficult, and I'll have a little more trouble doing, and that's going to be just learning to jut forward and jut back. Jut forward, jut back. Let the chin forward, jut back. Again, you can move around as you're jutting. Move around, but keep the scapulas back and keep the, uh, keep the shoulders back, okay?